Chatbot CTAs are a great tool for getting people to take action on your web pages, emails, and blog posts. In this video, we're going to show you everything you need to know about how to create and use those CTAs. Welcome to HubSpot Hacks, where we help you get more out of HubSpot. The CTAs tool inside of HubSpot makes it really easy for your team to create things like buttons and pop-ups that you can use across all of your assets. And even better, it gives you tracking performance so you can see exactly how all of them are working. For this video, we're going to focus on the CTAs tool that came out in 2023, but if you've been using HubSpot for a little while, you may also be familiar with the legacy CTAs tool that will be phased out soon. So in the CTAs tool here, you get here by going to marketing, lead capture, and CTAs. This does require the marketing hub. You get different things available on different levels, but pretty much everything we're gonna show you today is gonna to be available on the starter version or higher. So in here, we can see the CTAs we've already created. We can also hop over to the analyze tab to see any reporting about all of our CTAs. But we're gonna go in here and create a new one. So we'll go to this orange create button in the top right corner. And the first thing you're gonna notice is templates. So for most people, especially if you're just getting started, I recommend finding a template that looks kind of close to what you want and starting from there. But today, just so you know how to do everything, we're gonna show you how to start from scratch. Now, you'll notice that there are six different types of CTAs, and I like to kind of group these into two categories. So the three across the top are sticky banner, pop-up box, and slide in are all going to be things that appear on the page after a certain trigger. And we can I'll show you how to set up those triggers here in a second. But they generally aren't gonna be on the page when you first get there. All of your embedded CTAs, so your embedded, embedded image, and embedded button will be on the page. They'll be a part of that web page, landing page, email, whatever you put it on. So I'm gonna show you first how to create a pop-up box. And just wanna note here that a sticky banner and a slide in, how you create them, the triggers, the options are pretty much the same as this pop-up box. So let's go in here for a pop-up box. And the first thing you'll have here is your edit page. Now this is going to be extremely similar to any other asset that you've created inside of HubSpot, an email, a web page, a landing page that uses the drag and drop builder. So we've got our standard modules over here. You'll notice it's already got a couple modules. So it's got an image, some header text, a button. You can add things like a form to it. And it's gonna work just the same way as any other drag and drop builder. So we can click in here and get our options. So we can select a form. Maybe we've got a contact us form. I don't know why I'd put that in a CTA, but maybe you've, maybe you've got that there. More likely you're gonna have something like a sign up form or a, let's have a subscribe form in there. And we've already got a button on our form here. So we're gonna delete this button out and we'll edit this text. We'll say sign up now and we'll select an image here. We're just gonna browse from our image library and let's throw our HubSpot hacks logo in there. And that's way too big. So we're gonna say automatically adjust, which will bring it down here. So very, very quickly, doesn't look awesome, but in just a couple seconds, we've got a decent looking pop-up and you can customize the styles as you want. So every module has some style options that you can see here. So you can adjust things like padding uh, for this rich text module. If we wanted to change the text color, we've got our options up here for colors and font sizes and all that good stuff. So maybe we want that to be black. And then for our form, We've got style options here as well. So just like you might be used to in those other drag and drop builders, you really have a lot of control over how this looks. So once you have your CTA looking the way that you want to, and you can always hit this preview button to see what it's going to look like for visitors across different devices. The next thing you'll do is identify your targeting. So for any of those types of CTAs that I mentioned that will appear based on a trigger, one of your options is to have it come up on a button click. And I'll show you how to set that up here in a second, but essentially when somebody clicks a button, then this will appear. In our case, we have a pop-up, so this will pop up in the middle of the page, but we've also got those slide-in options and the top banner. Those will be available if you have it set up to click on a button. Doesn't matter who clicks on the button. We'll show you our filters here in a second, but there's no filters on this. Anybody that clicks on that button that can see the button and click on it, then it will appear for them. The rest of these we can filter further and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But we've got our trigger on page scroll so we can have these pop up after somebody scrolls for a certain percentage of the page. 
You can trigger on exit intent. So when somebody goes and clicks that X in the top window, or it looks like the browser thinks that they're gonna leave, then we'll show the pop-ups. This is a great way to show an offer that might get somebody to stay on the page if, if they were going to leave. So like a promotion, uh, or maybe a free asset, a content asset. You can also have a trigger after an, elap after an elapsed time, and this will be turned on by default when you first create your CTA. So we can have a trigger after seven seconds or any amount of seconds we would like. We can also have a trigger after inactivity. So if they've been on the page for a while and haven't done anything, we can prompt them to take action by having it pop up. So now we say where it will be shown. So again, if it's got the button option, that's on any page, but we can also refine for the rest of these. So right now this will appear if we do the button click and set that up or after seven seconds. So in our case, we can say we only want it to show up on this URL or we only want it to show up on URLs that contain these things. We can also change to query parameters if you want it to only show up with certain uh, UTM codes. We can also add exclusion rules, so maybe you want it to show up on every web page except for your landing pages, and all your landing pages are on a subdomain, so you could exclude uh, web pages that begin with that subdomain, for example. So you've got your options for what pages it appears on, and then you also have options for what people can see it. So we can say only show us contacts on certain lists. Uh, only show it to people who are logged in if you're running a membership site on HubSpot CMS Enterprise. And we can also filter by showing it you know, only for certain device types or language, if they've clicked another CTA in the past. So we've got all kinds of options if you want to get really granular with who can see the CTA. And then last but not least, we've got a how often it will be shown. So the last thing you want to do is hit somebody with a pop-up every time they come to your website, every page they go to, they see this pop-up again and again and again. At some point, it just becomes uh, getting in the way of their experience rather than driving action. Let's get frustrated and leave. So the default's pretty good uh, where we only show it once every two weeks regardless of whether they take action. So these options are only going to be available again on those top three CTA types. So the, the banner at the top, the pop-in, and the pop-up, and the slide-in. Then our last tab here is options. Uh, so we can turn it off for small screen sizes, we can associate this with a HubSpot campaign, and we can set it up in advance of when we actually want it to appear by scheduling for later or have it be taken down after a certain amount of time. So for example, if you're promoting a webinar, you'd want to set an unpublished date so that you're not promoting the webinar after you've hosted it. So one note here, these CTAs can all work whether or not the asset is on HubSpot or if you've got a website on like WordPress, for example, you can also have it appear there. For all of your pop-up type CTAs, so the pop-up, the slide in the web banner, all you need to do is add that HubSpot tracking code to your website. And then as long as those web pages meet your filtering that you set up here, then you they'll be able to see that CTA on those pages. So tracking code matches the filters, you'll be good to go. It is a little bit harder to have it show up with a button click if that button doesn't live on HubSpot CMS, but it does give you a code snippet that you or a developer can add to a button outside of HubSpot CMS to have the CTA appear. If its button is inside of HubSpot CMS, it's very easy to do, and I will actually show you that here towards the end of the video. So once you're done with that, hit review and publish. It'll show any warnings that you might have and kind of give you a recap of the options you selected. Hit publish now and then it will show you um, what you'll see for the analytics for that CTA. Obviously brand new, so we don't have any analytics in here. So back to the rest of our CTAs, I'll show you how to create the other type. It's very similar. So let's do an embedded CTA. So these CTAs are great for, uh, for example, if you have a blog and you want to make sure that you're following the best practice of every blog post has a call to action to uh, maybe generate a lead or promote an event or get them to sign up for a demo or a free trial, depending on the content of the blog post, your CTA may vary. So this is going to start with a button in here. Now, these ones are a little bit more finicky to edit. Usually what I do, depending on where you're going to put the CTA, Right now, it's restricted to a pretty narrow width by default when you first start it. So if you're gonna add it to a blog post or something where it's gonna sit at the bottom and kind of take up more of the page, probably the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go to design and adjust this width. So we're gonna adjust this up to 600 so we have a little bit more room to work. You can see we've got this wider here. It does start with a button. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that button and let's say I want an image and I want some text 
and I want a button. Let's say this is going to be to promote a HubSpot hacks video at the bottom of a blog post. So we'll select our image here. We'll use that HubSpot hacks logo again. That's a little bit big, so we're going to say that it can't be any taller than, let's just say 200 pixels, we'll keep it pretty small. Now let's go in here, we'll say, watch this video. It's super helpful. Great copywriter here. And we'll adjust the button to say, watch now. And we'll just say, watchad.com. We would put a video URL in there if we were doing this for real. And just like uh, with the other tool, we've got all kind of styles that we can adjust. So if we wanted to change um, you know, the color and the text and all that for that button, we could do that. But other than that, just like with the other one, very quickly, we have a nice embedded CTA and we can preview it. So it's gonna look very similar to how it looks in that edit window. With these embedded CTAs, so the embedded, embedded button and the embedded image, our options are much less because we're just adding them to a page. There is none of that targeting, uh, but we can add a campaign in here. Now, one of the things that you might be noticing is missing. If you've been using HubSpot for a long time and you're used to that legacy CTAs tool, unfortunately at this time, there is no smart CTAs or A-B testing in the, the new CTAs tool. I do think that that will be coming. I hope that I can record a new video very quickly um, because HubSpot's announced those features, but unfortunately there's been nothing announced or planned yet. So uh, just keep tuned, make sure you hit that subscribe button and we'll let you know once that's available. But as of right now, it's just gonna be standard CTAs, no smart CTAs or A-B testing. So we can review and publish here. And when you hit publish, it will go ahead and give you the code. So if you are using this, wanna put this CTA on a page that's not on HubSpot CMS, so HubSpot page, uh, or sorry, a WordPress page, maybe Squarespace page, et cetera then you can copy this code. And that's the code that you or a developer would need to add to that other content to be able to show this up. And again, you do want your HubSpot tracking, uh, tracking code to be on that website. All right, but hopefully you're using HubSpot CMS uh, and you can add these even more easily. So we're gonna show you, this is just a landing page here. And we're gonna show you two things. We'll show you how to trigger that uh, pop-up CTA and a button click and how to add an embedded CTA. So this is just a uh, very basic landing page with a drag and drop area here. Uh, if, you're, if your pages are more like hard-coded, then a developer can also add these in the back end uh, very easily. So let's go ahead and hit this plus mark. Uh, so in this case, we're gonna use the default modules. You may have specific modules for your themes for, for call to action, but we're just using a, a, the standard HubSpot theme here. So we'll go to modules, forms and buttons, and we'll add the call to action module here. And so that's what you'll use if you wanna use one of those embedded call to actions. And we just select which one we wanna use. So we'll create this one. And you can see it gets added to the page. Now the other thing we wanted to do here is we wanted to show you how to have, how to add that pop-up that appears on a button click. So if we just add a regular button, so we don't wanna add a call to action, we just add a regular button and the defaults to external, but we're gonna change this to pop-up CTA. It's a little bit confusing, it says pop-up CTA, it does work with those slide in and web banners as well. And we will select, we've got this registration pop-up that we built previously, and we'll say click here to see pop-up. Again, I'm a great copywriter. All right, now if we want to preview it, we can just hit this preview button in the top right-hand corner. And we can see we've got the embedded CTA. You noticed it was a little bit kind of distorted in the edit window, but once it's live on a page, it kind of fixes itself here. So that looks as we would expect. So we've got this embedded CTA. And if we click on our button, we should see that pop up because we had to set the trigger on that button click. So we're gonna exit out of this, go back. And just a quick reminder in your CTAs window, you've got this analyze tab. And this is kind of, you know, when people are new to HubSpot, a lot of the questions that I get is, why would I use a CTA? 
rather than just you know add maybe a saved section or just recreate it inside of an email or web page or just use a regular button rather than a CTA button. And this analyze tab is really the reason why you would wanna do that because if you've got a similar offer across all of your assets or across multiple assets, so maybe, maybe you've got a button that you're putting in five different emails and you wanna get performance tracking, how well did that button cause people to actually take action across all five emails, then that's really the magic of the CTAs tool. So most of the people, once you're actually using these CTAs, tool, CTAs tools often, this Analyze tab is gonna become your best friend, or if you wanna see the analytics just for one, one CTA or one button, you just click into it here, and just like all the other HubSpot assets that you might be used to, you can get uh, detailed performance analytics here. And if you've got a form in it, so if you've got like that pop-up CTA that has a form in it, it'll actually even show you those form submissions directly inside of the CTAs tool. So as you can see, very awesome for giving your performance analytics across assets and helping your team stay consistent with how they're doing those call to actions so they can follow best practices and help keep your brand consistent. So that's all there is to it for the CTAs tool. Very easy to use, but gives you a ton of power. For more HubSpot tips, tricks, and how-tos, make sure you hit that subscribe button and jump down to the description below and sign up for our newsletter as well. See you next time.